All right, without further ado, let's jump into the DLC so we can get out of here. So, what's our final tally? Any percent versus 100%? Uh, let me pull that up one second here. Give, give me the 100% number first for dramatic effect. It was 2,562. For 100%? What about any percent? Uh, quite a bit lower. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we're doing 100% again. Yeah. All right. So, uh, timer's going to be basically the same thing. Wait for the, the first level load and then count me in when we're ready. All right. I, I can wait. It was 155, by the way. 155? Uh, that was a good, good, good old college try. Estimate should be 30 minutes. Yeah. We do have a $1,000 donation here. It says, hey, Azrae, always liked your stream, always hated cancer. Seems like a good time to donate. Thank you. Is there a name? Uriel. Anonymous. Anonymous. Oh, Thank you, Anon. Consummate professionalism. We have a hundred dollar donation from Palant Terrace. Uh, Talos Principle was by far the best game I played in 2015. This run is amazing considering how much trouble these complex puzzles gave me. Nice run and great cause. Also, the middle number was six, but we got there. Thanks for looking out. All right. Count us in. Three, two, one, go. Uriel, awaken. So now that we're caught up on the story, uh, saying these same the lines. The end of days <laughs> is upon us. The process is complete. The world Too will soon. be consumed, and uh, my well. children will ascend. As it should be. But Uriel. So this level, they may seem familiar as a destroyed version of the first level from the main game. Uh, we're playing as a different robot. This one has a name. His name is Uriel. And Elohim's process has been completed. And now he is to save uh, se uh, 17 of his robot friends. Um, and I'm also going to be collecting more hidden stars to access the secret area. So. Again, since I can't count, we're starting with number three. And we're going to hit to the right first because I want to mix it up a little bit. So the DLC has the same engine and everything, so it does all the same tricks. Uh, it's a little bit shorter. And uh, the devs have wisened up a little bit to all of the speedrunning tricks. And uh, I, I think I'll say that I'm, I'm probably going to look a little bit a little bit shakier on my DLC performance just because this hasn't been out for very long, so some of the routes are still a little bit new to me. Um, overall, though, it's still a fairly similar. Um, but uh, it's obvious that the devs made extra, sh uh, extra care. Oops. They took extra care into preventing any unintended solutions, and you'll see exactly how well they did. So the goal in the DLC is to rescue robots, and to do that all you have to do is flip a switch which opens the gate to them. So instead of collecting sigils, the uh, way to complete each of these puzzles is to flip that switch. Mm -hmm. Though the stars also remain as collectibles, the same as they were in the original game. This jump can be a little bit finicky, so there we go. Not well. And I'm going to do this as safely as humanly possible here. But you're a robot. As safely as robotly possible here. There you go. There we are. 
You don't actually need to bring that cube to make that jump, but it makes it a lot tighter. Uh, uh, it's too close to the tree. Okay. So we're going to break a cube out here, bring it around to the back side of the puzzle, use it to jump back in. Same thing uh, to get two more stars in this area. All right, so we have a bit of walking if you'd like to read uh, a couple more donations. We have $25 from Jadmaster5. Had to wait for this game to donate as this was the game that got me into speedrunning. Doing these puzzles in the intended route as fast as possible. I thought I had something going in my solo playthrough, but seeing this game crushed so well by Azrae brings a tear to my eye. Save the frames, kill the animals. I apologize for making you cry, friend. $50 from Seven Soul. I played this game just a few weeks ago and I loved it, though I don't remember it being about parkour. $50 to Reader's Choice. Uh, my choice, by the way, is for the Yoshi's Island bonus. Gotta meet that 8,000, make sure we get that in the marathon. Definitely. Yoshi's Island, definitely one of the classic speed games. Incredibly skill intensive, incredibly fun. So here we have a couple of jammer glitches just to grab. And our star. Uh, there we go. I would not like to quit game. I'm not done yet. Those beeps no are the game trying to get you to pay attention to the story. We will be ignoring them. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, they give you a checkpoint as soon as you leave any of the world, so you can't just save and quit uh, and get back to the hub. You need to actually walk across these bridges forward and backwards. All right, world two is what we've all been waiting for, what I've all been waiting for. I don't know if you've all been waiting for it. Uh, this is probably the most interesting world in 100% for this category. Um, we're going to start with the bunny hop and then all of the puzzles are pretty much interlocked with each other in different ways um, to try to get all of the stars. Uh, I need to stand on the very edge of this wall to be able to grab this cube. Let's try placing it a little bit better. Should be just out of reach. We'll be able to grab it just like that. And I'm just gonna walk across these, uh, these walls, go directly from out of bounds to the end of this puzzle, and now I'm gonna break out jam person. So another tricky cube grab here. There we are. I'm definitely hoping for the best up here. There we go. There's a very small window that lets you jam that barrier there in front of the star. So now, the moment of truth. I honestly don't know whether or not this trick is going to work on this frame rate. So... Yes! All right. Consistent. Consistent. Easy every time. Come back and grab our hero cube here. And use it to just jump straight over this gate. All right, I feel a lot better now. I was, I was expecting to have to like turn on cheats like our Half-Life and Portal friends. Um, uh, there we go. 
one more guided slide to be done here to get this onto the other side of the barrier. It needs to be a little bit closer. Oops. So now we're using some conveniently placed level geometry uh, to get up to this section over here. Activate this fan. Yeah, grab a star. This jump is a little bit tricky. You need to have pretty much the right balance of speed and height and it's honestly kind of a kind of a toss-up when you're not gonna get it. Fortunately, it only took a couple of tries, and it doesn't really matter too much because you can retry it almost immediately. Here, though, I need to be incredibly careful not to fall off of this wall. Um, wall two has a lot of these little shimmy until you can just barely see what you're trying to interact with. Tricks. And I'm gonna be as safe as possible around this star. Because, by the way, not the not how you're supposed to do World 2. The endless expanse of sand. Alright. So we come over to here. Come over to here. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, got it. So, unfortunately, we're never really out of the woods as far as difficult tricks go. There's another one uh, in World 1 that I got quote-unquote consistent about two hours ago, so we'll hope for the best for that one, and if it takes a couple of tries, it takes a couple of tries. It's not a huge deal. First, though, let's grab our leprechaun pants. here. Alright. So now in the open field area, um, you're supposed to bounce a laser source back and forth between two fans. But there's a faster way to do that. Unfortunately, it requires me to make a sniper shot, so uh, we're going to set this up pretty much perfectly and then hope for the best a little later on. Uh, for now, there's a lot of walking, though, so if you have a couple of donations, that's a great time. Uh, yeah, we have a $25 donation from Sebastian254. Thanks for holding the event and running this awesome masterpiece. The Talos Principle is one of my favorite games. Glad to see it ran so masterfully. Uh, masterfully, Azerite, let your will be done. <laughs> we have $50 from Empath saying that slap was way too hard. Even I felt it. Kill the animals, not the runner. It no, was pretty hard when I felt it, too. I deserved it. <laughs> if you don't think I deserved it, go back to Cave Story of 2014. I, I have seen that bot. I'm pretty sure that was fair. It was fair. Yeah. $5 from uh, Oberton13. You can remember your numbers all you want, but I know that Eternalize is actually faster. You don't need numbers for that. Also, you can press X to reset. Eternalize being faster is the biggest secret of the Talos 100% community. Also, $5 from Milton Library Assistant. You think you're clever, don't you? What makes you so certain that you're breaking the game, huh? Isn't it more likely that the developers intended these solutions to be valid rather than you finding some glitch in the system? Yeah. A lot of the solutions we use actually are about as complicated as some of the star and even sigil solutions in this game, so that's not too much of a stretch. All right, so the sniper shot went pretty quick. See, we build laser connected all the way over there. Um, and then we have two more stars and one more sigil in this area. This star, in particular, is incredibly difficult. Um, 
You need to do two incredibly precise jumps to get across. So here's the first one. And there's the second one, and it's easy every time. <laughs> See, Ferret, I practiced. I saw it. <laughs> Jones swapping there. And we're going to use this cube to get up onto the high wall to get the star. Now, the funny thing is, I don't actually know what some of the intended solutions for these stars are, because, you know, by the time I had played this DLC, I had been speedrunning it for a while, so, I mean, some of the solutions felt, they felt like they might be right, but at the same time, they felt like I might have just been using, you know, speedrun strats, but... I'm pretty sure that star solution is pretty close. Yeah, it might be. Alright, so on to world four. I always do this level first, or this puzzle first in World 4, because it's the worst and I hate it. I just want to get it out of the way as fast as possible. So. I've seen a variety of ways to get the Star and Sigil in this puzzle. All of them are terrible. All of them are terrible. So what I want to do here is jam that. Over here and plant it here, and then wait. We'll say 19 seconds. So at 34, we'll stop the recording. So until then, I have about 10 seconds to get a selfie for Twitter. Couch huddle up. All right. Oh, I'm going over time. Going over time. Huh? All right. That'll be on the Azure Speedruns Twitter within the hour. Should I post it to the Azure subreddit? You should. Dude, reddit.com slash r slash Azure for all of your Azure. All right, made it just in time. This puzzle, in contrast, is incredibly easy. Um, so it's a nice breather after that one. Uh, we just grab this cube, and then there's this intended path to get into the level with the cube to do the star. Normally, you're supposed to just walk it over to that button and put it there, but instead, uh, I'm going to get up into this tree. Oops. And then drop it. There we go. Air delivery is relatively intended up until uh, the very end of it, so uh, boring puzzle stuff happening right now. <laughs> All right, so now we have this cube out of here. I'm gonna put it just about there and use it to item jump over this fence. The jammer has to be not on the cube. Maybe the little jammer ghost thing, so there we go. Be free, Mr. Mulsiber. Alright, just gonna plant this on a button to activate a fan and grab a star, so let's keep these donations coming. 
All right, we have a $30 donation from Rectangular. My favorite thing about AGDQ and SGDQ is seeing all my favorite games mixed in with games I've never heard of and smashing them all into as many pieces as possible. Can't wait for the Mario block tomorrow. Let's kill all the Yoshis. We have $20 here from Anonymous. This is my first time watching on Twitch rather than YouTube. It feels even more entertaining. When it comes to Metroid, I'd normally say save the animals for 100%, that is, but for anything else, Ah, let's kill him. Needs of the frames outweigh the needs of the animals. All right, so coming up is a trick that I may or may not accidentally leave the frame rate too high just to just to see what'll happen. Um, what I'm going to do is put the cube on one side of the barrier, put myself on the other side of the barrier, and then with a little bit of timing and a little bit of luck, uh, it should give me a little bit of a boost. This is one of the most finicky tricks in the game. We still don't know exactly why it works. There we go. Uh, unfortunately, it was a little bit too much, so you might have to tone it down a little bit. So let's go to next FPS, make it 60. There we are. That should put us right on top of the wall, and we can drop straight down and skip the most obnoxious puzzle in the entire game. So 16 stars, 17 robots, that's all there is to collect. And now we are heading to the secret world. There are seven gray sigils that all include puzzles that I thought were really cool as a speedrunner, because they, uh, they use a bunch of lasers, um, jammers, and barriers in ways that you normally would not uh, think you would, like using lasers to break other lasers, and <clears throat> stuff like that. Um, for the speedrunner, however, we're just going to be jailbreaking a jammer and then using that to break every single puzzle in half, so that should be fun. Maybe a donation to Reeble, I do one last Tetris puzzle. Yes, I have $30 anonymous donation. Thank you guys for destroying some awesome games. I've had several family, uh, family members face down cancer and triumph. However, not all are so lucky. Here's to those who have fallen and may the animals be saved. All right. So here we are in the hidden world. Um, first puzzle we're gonna be doing is very difficult. quick hop over the wall there. And then this jammer in the middle is going to be incredibly important. So if we back up into this corner, we can actually jam the jammer so far into the corner that we can grab it through this little crack here. So this is going to be important for the rest of this level. Um, is it red ferret? I can never remember. It's blue. <laughs> I always guess wrong. I should probably know that by now. All right. An intended solution right there. And just because of how fast it is. I guess while I'm knocking out these last puzzles, I can give a, a few quick shout outs. Uh, first, thanks a ton to Mr. Monopoly for pretty much single-handedly ensuring that I can make it all the way out here. Um, Unfortunately, he couldn't be here because he had to be an adult. But uh, congrats a lot on your new job, and I hope to see you around in my stream a lot more. Um, lots of other friends, too. Uh, but hard to think of when I'm trying to play video games fast. Shoutouts to Notch for hanging out in my chat while I play this game, and for, you know, loving hit guys. I need to grab this jammer one more time for this last puzzle. Um. Ah. Uh, well, there you are. Huge thanks to the Unconditional Love Club. Uh, you know who you are, all of you. Thank you very much. And uh, everybody out there watching for making AGDQ what it is. So, I want to jam this gate. Put this about here. And then this needs to be positioned pretty much perfectly. There we go. All right. 
We have one more sigil to get. Alright, I guess Zbaz too. You get a shout out. I thought about it. <laughs> Alright, that's our last sigil. We just have one more puzzle to do and one more computer to talk to. That is not. That is not right. <laughs> That is right, there we go, I think. There we are. All right, we did it. Let's transcend. Sorry about my voice as well. It's been blown out from all the hype. Sacrificing myself to send the admin through because that is the fastest dialogue here, and time is going to be coming up uh, on, I believe, the next input. So, time is now. Twitter. I didn't really have an opportunity to do it because it was a hard game. <laughs> now we can watch the world uh, get destroyed around us. Good camera angle. Uh, I'm tagging everybody. M1, how do you spell M1? Uh... Got it. You might need to go Two zero one six. I can. All right. So that was the Talus Principle and the DLC. Thanks everybody for hanging out. I'm gonna go get an omelet or something. Bye.